Podcast from the First Coast News Weather Team, certified by Weather Rate, sponsored by AC Designs. So still about an hour and 40 minutes left before the polls close. Sometimes just looking out the window, I think is the best way. And well, this is how it looks downtown by the bank and really throughout most of northeast Florida, southeastern Georgia. There are some clouds drifting in from the ocean. The moisture will eventually increase because of intensifying Raphael. But this evening, again, at least for the next hour and 40 minutes, looks nice and dry if you're going out there, uh, whether to vote or you have other plans. Speaking of Raphael, I briefly showed you the cone of concern. Wanted to spend a little more time with it, both to verify that we're in good shape here locally, but then also if you happen to have travel plans. So I suspect by 8 o'clock tonight, Raphael will be a hurricane and at least a category one, of course, since we're expected to be a hurricane. Some indications it might become a two as it approaches Cuba tonight and or after it passes Key West and makes this little jog off to the west and northwest. Some indications are here that although it's November, the water in the Gulf is warm enough, not quite enough shear yet to where it possibly intensifies into a two. Can't rule out a cat three. But the most significant aspect, especially for us here in northeastern Florida and southeastern Georgia, is that at this point, with full confidence now, it's actually going to jog more to the west and to the northwest. Now, notice it's going to make a pretty close call to the Keys. Just if you're thinking about voting, if the Keys had been under a hurricane warning today versus a tropical storm warning, it would have been interesting to see what they would have done with the polls because typically in the Keys, as you can imagine, as low as they are, even with just a cat one, uh, they do have some evacuations, but just a tropical storm warning. And unless this does something unusual, it looks like the most the Keys will have will be tropical storm winds. The hurricane force winds will stay just west of the dry Tortugas. Now, for those of you with uh, weather relatives, friends in the New Orleans area, or really for that matter, because there's a big divergence on the computer models, I could be convinced this will eventually make landfall again in Houston or as far to the west as Mobile and Pensacola. However, also with plenty of confidence, once the hurricane gets to the central Gulf of Mexico, it looks like between drier air and shear and then much cooler temperatures, it will be weaker. In fact, notice what the forecast is barely a tropical storm when it makes landfall a second time in the United States. We'll keep you updated as far as that is concerned. As far as as we go through the night tonight, I think this computer model does a pretty good idea, and that is that all those showers increasing overnight. Notice that I don't think we'll see a significant increase in showers more well beyond the midnight hour. And then as we head to, and or maybe you're heading to work and school tomorrow morning, big complex of thunderstorms. Will it be offshore or starting to come ashore at the same time? Some other showers coming from the south, so we'll just should see a further increase in showers and thunderstorms during the day on Wednesday. At this point, because these are tropical rains, any rains heavy enough lasting long enough to possibly cause some street flooding. I think there's more of a concern out toward the uh, Swanee and for those of you up toward the Okefenokee. So overall downpour is on the way, but there'll be some sun. Winds will be gusty. Small craft flags will be flying. Pretty similar situation on Thursday. And then as Raphael continues to go farther off to the west in the Gulf, not as wet on Friday and then on Saturday and Sunday, relatively dry weather. In fact, into Veterans Day.